kindly subscribe to the channel for more updates. So welcome to a new subtopic, okay? So I think this time we're dealing with exponential mapping. Right? We said a mapping is said to be exponential if the ratio between consecutive members of the codomain is what? A constant. Alright? Now, most preferably, we use what? The range. Are you okay? We use what? The range. The range. Because the range is a subset of what? The codomain. When all elements of the range have what? Have consecutive or have corresponding members in what? In the domain. Are you alright? I think those are just reminders of what we did previously. Now, the general rule of an exponential mapping is what? y is equal to ar raised to the power x minus b when a is the first element of the range of what? b is the first element of the domain alright and what? and R R is what? is a common what? is a common ratio are you okay? yes sir are you sure you're okay? Let's solve a simple example of this. Hmm? It's one of the easy topics you can ever do. Okay? So please keep this rule in your what? In your memory. Alright? Yes, sir. Try as much as possible to keep it in your memory. Let's start with our first example. Example 1. Now, example one, they said find the rule, sorry, find the rule of the following mapping. Alright? Yes. We have x maps to y, 1 maps to 1, 2 maps to 4, 3 maps to 16, 4 maps to 64, and what? And 5 maps to what? 2 and 3 and 1. 6 Good. So the first thing you must do is to inspect to know the type of mapping you are dealing with. Alright? But when it comes to this, you have to look at what? If there's a common ratio between the consecutive members of what? The range. Are you okay? Now watch. 4 divided by 1 gives you what? 16 divided by 4. 4. 16 divided by 4 gives you what? 4. 64 divided by 16. 4. 256 divided by 64. Take your time, please. Before you give me an answer. So what do you get? So there's a what? There's a what? There's a common ratio. Do you get it? There's what? A common ratio. So in solving this, now our a is what? So a is going to be equal to what? The first element of what? Of the range. What's the first element here? One. One. So a is one. B is what? B is what? Also what? One. Ah. The first element of what? Of the domain. And R is equal to what? The ratio. The common ratio. So I can pick 4 divided by what? 1, okay? 
What do I get? Four. Four. The next thing is that I just have to what? Substitute what I've gotten into what? The general formula to now generate what? My rule. Are you okay? Yes. Alright. So. Now. You know why I already know? A is what? One. one. So I'll write the one. Put it in bracket, okay? Yes. R is what? Four. 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 Raise the power what? X minus what? E. Which is what? One. One. Do you see that? Yes. Now watch. Y is going to give me what? Uh -huh. One times this gives you what? Four, four raised to the power x minus one. Is that okay? Yes. And that is what the rule of this particular mapping. Now, the next thing you must always do is what to try to check and see if it is true. All right. If I put one in place of x, it becomes what y minus one, right? Yes. And that gives you what zero. Not so. Four raised to the power zero gives you what one. One. If I put Two in place of it comes what? Two minus what? One. Four is the power one gives you what? Four. If I put three here, that means four is the power what? Two. Four is the power two will give you what? Sixty-four. Sorry, four is the power two gives you what? Uh, Sixteen. Are you okay? Yes. Uh -huh. And if you check for the rest, you realize that the rule is what? It's actually what? Working. Are you okay? Yes. Alright. Alright, so now, let's look at the second question. They are saying that we should find the rule of the mapping below, right? Yes. X maps to Y, negative 1 maps to 32, 0 maps to 16, 1 maps to 8, 2 maps to 4, 3 maps to what? Alright? So we ask ourselves the question. Alright? We have to first of all test it to see. Is it exponential? Is it linear? What is it? You understand? Yes. So the first thing is what? You must always what? Test. You must always do what? Yes. Test to see. So now let's test it. 16 divided by 32. Ah. 0.5. 8 divided by 16 gives you what? Ah. 4 divided by 8 gives you what? Ah. And 2 divided by 4? 1 over 2. Or half. Are you okay? 1 over 2 is not, it's not standard. Alright? Yes. The right thing is you say half. Alright, so let's come. So we know that it's what? Exponential, right? So we know that. Are you okay? So. We know that what? A is what? What is A? A is the first element of what? The range. Which is what? A is 32. B is equal to what? Negative 1. And R is simply equal to what? You can take 60 divided by what? 32. And the answer is what? Half. Are you okay? Yes. Huh? So the next thing is that we now substitute. Alright. A is what? 32. Not so. R is what? 1 over what? 2 or half. Not so. Eh? To the power what? X. Minus B is what? Negative one. So minus negative what? One. Are you here? Yes. So this gives us what? Now, watch here. This is where manipulation begins. Are you okay? Yes. Good. 32 times 1 over 2 or half raised to the power x. Now, x minus negative 1 gives you what? You see that? Yes. Very good. Plus 1 or x plus what? 1. This number here, 2. 
We can apply this law to rewrite it. Because 1 over 2 is the same as saying what? 1 over 2 raised to the power what? 1. So it's the same as what? If you apply this law, it's the same as what? 2 raised to the power what? Negative what? 1. Okay, this particular rule. Are you okay? Yes. So I'm going to rewrite it. That implies that y is going to be equal to now let's also focus on the 32 as well. 32 can also be written as what? 32 can also be written as what? Uh -huh. 2 raised to the power what? I can say it's what? It's as what? 2 raised to the power 5. You can try it. 2 raised to the power 5 will give you what? 32. Are you okay? Type it on your calculator and verify for me. It's not so. Yes, yes. So tell me, instead of writing the two, I write this way. 2 raised to the power of 5. Then you allow for 2 raised to the power of negative 1. one. Raised to the power of x plus 1. Are you paying attention? Yes. Now, watch. I'm not going to what? apply the laws here. Alright? This 2 is not really raised to the power of negative 1, not so. Huh? And again, it's raised to the power of x plus what? 1. This law here tells us that a raised to the power of m also raised to the power of m should give you what? m times what? a raised to the power of m times what? m. So here, we multiply the powers. Do you understand? Yes. Huh? Very good. Let me open the bracket for this, okay? Negative 1 times s gives you what? Yes. 2 raised to the power of negative x. And then negative 1 times 1 gives you what? Negative 1 times 1 gives you what? Negative 1. Are you okay now? Yes. Now, let's now come and apply the first law, right? The first law says that when you are multiplying powers of the same base, only to the power to add. Not so. So this means 2 raised to the power 5 times 2 raised to the power negative x minus 1. Not so. So we add their powers because they are what? They are multiplying. Do you get me? They are what? Multiplying. So that gives you y is going to be equal to 2 raised to the power 5 plus negative x minus what? One. The same as 2 raised to the power 5 minus x minus 1, right? We can regroup. No, so let's regroup and see how what we get. So y raised to the power, sorry, y is equal to 2 raised to the power 5 minus 1 minus what? X. And that now implies that y is going to give me the answer 2 raised to the power what? 4. Four. Raise the power forward minus, minus s. s, and that is the rule. Therefore, the rule. Let me clean this. Therefore, the rule of what? Of the mapping is two raised to the power four minus s. Sorry. Y is equal to 2 raised to the power 4 minus x. Or x what? X maps to what? 2 raised to the power 4 minus x. And this is how it is what? It is done. Are you okay? So please, we will look at that later, okay? Like, we will look at more examples maybe in our subsequent what? Meetings. Are you okay? Alright. So that's what I say, which two? Uh, two left to the five, right? 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 Two left to
It's the same as what? Two raised to the power two plus three, and that gives you what? Two raised to the power five. Let me now explain to you what you are not trying to get. I'm going to solve this question through what you people know. Do you get it? Two raised to the power two times two raised to the power three simply means two raised to the power two means what? Two times what? Two. Now let's come to this. Two raised to the power three two means what? Two times two times two. Now together, let's write it together. That becomes what? Two raised to the power what? Five. Two times two five. times two times two times two. So two raised to the power what? Five. It's not as if you are adding the powers. Yes. That's where the law comes from. That's why you're failing to understand, my sister. Okay? Any question on that? Any question? Alright. Yes, you are ever asking a question. What was that? Yeah. Hey, what was the question about? I'm going to sit I the, the same question as that. Uh -huh. So now I hope you're okay now. It's not as if the two is vanishing. It is not, it is it, it's the same thing, right? It's just a way of what? Rewriting it. Do you get me? Huh? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So uh, we'll be looking at more of that in our subsequent to our meetings. Alright? Uh -huh. So um, stay tuned for more videos on my Instagram, okay?